Hi, I'm Rose from California. In my last video, I talked about how I moved to Japan on the JET program. Today, I would like to share my experience living in Oita Prefecture for three years on the JET program. Before moving to Japan in 2013 on the JET program, I had never visited Japan. However, I did have a background of learning Japanese for three years before moving here, so I was pretty confident in my ability to communicate in Japanese. And that may have been the thing that allowed me to adjust to life in Oita as well as I did, because from the moment I arrived in Oita, all communication was in Japanese. The person from the city office who was helping me and the other new ALTs get our living situation set up didn't speak any English. Most of the teachers at the schools where I would be working also didn't speak any English. In fact, even some of the Japanese English teachers that I worked with didn't speak that much English. In my case, that helped me to really get fully immersed in the language, which helped me improve a lot faster than I probably would have otherwise. But not everyone settled in as well as I did. One of the new ALTs who moved to the same town at the same time as I did ended up leaving Japan after just three days. He didn't speak much Japanese, which I think was probably the biggest reason for his decision to go home. It can be really stressful being placed in an environment where you can't speak the language that everyone else is speaking. That's why I think it's really important to try to learn as much Japanese as you can before moving here. But also, I think it's important not to be so hard on yourself if you can't understand everything right away. For him, it may have been the right decision to go home when he did. But I still can't help but wonder if things wouldn't have gotten better if he had stuck it out a few more weeks. Despite being able to converse fairly well, I too had my share of difficulties getting used to a new job, new town, and new country. At the time, the ATMs in my town didn't have any English, and since kanji was my weak point, I couldn't even withdraw money from my account at first. But even though some things took some getting used to, I tried to stay positive and remember that with each experience, I was growing and becoming more capable of surviving in Japan. The town I lived in was pretty rural, about an hour from Oita City by car. Mountains, beaches, and hot springs were all a short drive away, and I enjoyed them to the fullest. Just about every weekend, I was driving around and enjoying the scenery and finding the best local hot springs. There were lots of cool festivals and kagura performances. Cherry blossoms in spring, maple leaves in fall, fields of flowers in summer, pretty much everything you could ask for. I worked at the town's junior high school four days out of the week. The other day was spent teaching at various elementary schools around town. As an ALT, or assistant language teacher, my job was to assist the Japanese English teacher in teaching English to the students. At first, I didn't really know what I was doing or what was expected of me. At the junior high school, the teachers I worked with were pretty good at taking the lead and communicating with me before class what they wanted me to do in class. At elementary school, however, it was a whole different kind of game. In general, the elementary schools that I visited didn't have actual English teachers. Rather, their homeroom teachers were expected to teach English to the students once a week, despite many of them not being able to speak any English. So when I came once or twice a month to each elementary school, there was often not much in the way of a plan. Despite being an assistant language teacher, suddenly it was my job to come up with some sort of game or activity to do with the class, while the homeroom teacher just stood aside and watched. It was for this reason that I didn't enjoy teaching at elementary schools very much, especially in the beginning. I was surprised at how loud and playful a lot of the students were. I had imagined before coming to Japan that most students were quiet and well-behaved. But that couldn't have been further from the truth. Although disruptive students could sometimes be frustrating, 
Overall, I found the kids to be quite adorable and funny. Contrary to my prior belief, most of the kids I met were not afraid to show their personalities and say exactly what they were thinking. In fact, some of them were honest to a fault. They would sometimes say rude or inappropriate things to me or other teachers. Since I was not supposed to speak Japanese in front of the kids, for a long time they all assumed that I couldn't speak Japanese. That obviously made them want to say wildly inappropriate things even more because they thought I wouldn't understand what they were saying. It took me some time before I was able to figure out how to handle these situations, but during my three years of teaching mostly the same students each year, I was able to bond with a lot of the students, and many of them started to treat me with more respect as time passed. Watching them grow up and change over the years was one of my favorite parts of working in Oita as an ALT. Jet salary is one of the best salaries that you can find for an ALT position in Japan. It increases slightly each year you stay on the job. Living expenses in the town where I lived were quite low. My rent for a 1LDK apartment was just over 40,000 yen per month. Due to the higher salary and lower living expenses, I was able to pay off my student loans in the three years that I was on the JET program. After three years on the job, I decided not to renew my contract for another year. Even though I loved my town and my job, it was time for me to try something else and live in a new area. I wasn't getting any younger, and I wanted to get more experience doing other things as I knew I wouldn't be able to be an ALT forever. So I looked for new jobs online, and I had some interviews, and my next job was decided. I would be moving to Tokyo to work in a Neikaiwa. Little did I know I would be meeting the man who would later become my husband, my very first day in the city. Today's story ends here for now. In the next video, I will talk about my life after JET. How I moved to Tokyo, met the man of my dreams, worked at various jobs, and at times barely had enough money to pay my rent. So stay tuned! I hope you enjoyed listening to this part of my story. Please like and subscribe to see more content about my life in Japan. See you all again next time. Bye!